Beloved, hear the word of God. Feel the spirit. Join our service every Sunday at 10 a.m. as we connect with the word of God. See you Sunday, and to God be the glory. Sisters and brothers in faith and in struggle, good morning. And here are your announcements for Sunday, June the 5th, 2022. Your generous contributions help support the mission of the Abyssinian Church. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. Simply text ABBY to 77977. That's ABBY, A-B-Y, to 77977. Or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account at 917-710-7933. You can mail your contribution to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and your generosity. We invite you to continue to lift in prayer members of our faith community who are requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names will appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. The Abyssinian Cafe Virtual Sunday Brunch takes place today, Sunday, June the 5th at 1.30 p.m. Please remember to register for Abbey Cafe by visiting abyssinian.org. And our noonday Bible study with Reverend Pamela Mason takes place tomorrow, Monday, June the 6th at noon. Please see on your screen, join details, and this information is also posted abyssinian.org the good grief bereavement ministry meets via zoom tuesday june the 7th at 7 p.m deacons henry mccurtis and sydney bush lead this powerful bi-weekly dialogue that explores issues of experience and anticipated loss see on your screen join details and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information the Love and Marriage Ministry will lead Wednesday evening Bible study in June with Deacon Keith and I, Javette Hines, presenting a focus on a family that prays together, stays together. See details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. We welcome you to join Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line takes place on Thursday, June the 9th at 7 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. You will find Zoom and dial-in details on your screen and the church's website under Worship Services. The Abyssinian Scholarship Ministry is offering scholarships for the 2022-2023 fall semester. Visit abyssinian.org for the application and eligibility criteria. The Abyssinian Scholarship Ministry applications are also available at the church lobby reception desk. The Abyssinian Federal Credit Union will award a $500 scholarship to a high school senior or college freshman for the 2022 semester. See criteria details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org. Abyssinian Sunday School Ministry will have its annual Youth Achievement and Promotion Ceremony this upcoming Saturday, June the 11th, from 11 a.m. till 3 p.m. 
in the courtyard of the Sugar Babies Child Development Center across the street from the church. The event keynote speaker is our own Dr. Justine Anderson. Parents, Sunday school teachers, and children are encouraged to dress comfortably and attend as we plan to have a great time with food and with fellowship. For recognition, please submit your child's achievements to KPEAK as soon as possible or call Sister Peak, the church office, extension 216. The Abyssinian Church Diaconate and Trustee Boards will celebrate their annual sermon on Sunday, June 12th at 10 a.m. with the Reverend Dr. D. Darrell Griffith as our guest preacher for the occasion. On Friday, June 17th at 7.30 p.m., Damien Sneed will conduct the Harlem Chamber Players presentation of The Ordering of Moses, a monumental oratorio for soloist, choir, organ, and orchestra. The event takes place at the Riverside Church, and for ticket information, visit abyssinian.org or go to www.harlemchamberplayers.org. The Abyssinian Virtual Day of Grace, a one-day new members orientation, takes place on Saturday, June 18th, from 9 a.m. until noon. Visit abyssinian.org for registration details. The Abyssinian Church will acknowledge our 2022 high school and college graduates on Baccalaureate Sunday, June 26th, in the 10 a.m. worship service. Our guest speaker for the occasion will be President of Fordham University, Reverend Joseph McShane. Graduates who want to share their academic achievements for acknowledgement on Baccalaureate Sunday should visit abyssinian.org for further details. Please remember, sisters and brothers, that the submission deadline is June 20th, 2022. Your generous contributions help support the mission of the Abyssinian Church. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. Simply text ABBY to 77977. That's ABBY, A-B-Y, to 77977. Or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account at 917-710-7933. You can mail your contribution to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and your generosity. We invite you to continue to lift in prayer members of our faith community who are requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names will appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. The Abyssinian Cafe Virtual Sunday Brunch takes place today, Sunday, June the 5th at 1.30 p.m. Please remember to register for Abbey Cafe by visiting abyssinian.org. And our noonday Bible study with Reverend Pamela Mason takes place tomorrow, Monday, June the 6th at noon. Please see on your screen, join details, and this information is also posted abyssinian.org the good grief bereavement ministry meets via zoom tuesday june the 7th at 7 p.m deacons henry mccurtis and sydney bush lead this powerful bi-weekly dialogue that explores issues of experience and anticipated loss see on your screen join details 
and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. The Love and Marriage Ministry will lead Wednesday evening Bible study in June with Deacon Keith and I, Javette Hines, presenting a focus on a family that prays together, stays together. See details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. We welcome you to join Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line takes place on Thursday, June the 9th at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. You will find Zoom and dial-in details on your screen and the church's website under Worship Services. The Abyssinian Scholarship Ministry is offering scholarships for the 2022-2023 fall semester. Visit abyssinian.org for the application and eligibility criteria. The Abyssinian Scholarship Ministry applications are also available at the church lobby reception desk. The Abyssinian Federal Credit Union will award a $500 scholarship to a high school senior or college freshman for the 2022 semester. See criteria details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org. Abyssinian Sunday School Ministry will have its annual Youth Achievement and Promotion Ceremony this upcoming Saturday, June the 11th, from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. in the courtyard of the Sugar Babies Child Development Center across the street from the church. The event keynote speaker is our own Dr. Justine Anderson. Parents, Sunday school teachers, and children are encouraged to dress comfortably and attend as we plan to have a great time with food and with fellowship. For recognition, please submit your child's achievements to K-Peak as soon as possible or call Sister Peak, the church office, extension 216. The Abyssinian Church Diaconate and Trustee Boards will celebrate their annual sermon on Sunday, June 12th at 10 a.m. with the Reverend Dr. D. Daryl Griffith as our guest preacher for the occasion. On Friday, June 17th at 7.30 p.m., Damian Sneed will conduct the Harlem Chamber Players presentation of the Ordering of Moses, a monumental oratorio for soloist, choir, organ, and orchestra. The event takes place at the Riverside Church, and for ticket information, visit abyssinian.org or go to www.harlemchamberplayers.org. The Abyssinian Virtual Day of Grace, a one-day new members orientation, takes place on Saturday, June 18th, from 9 a.m. until noon. Visit abyssinian.org for registration details. The Abyssinian Church will acknowledge our 2022 high school and college graduates on Baccalaureate Sunday, June 26th, in the 10 a.m. worship service. Our guest speaker for the occasion will be President of Fordham University, Reverend Joseph McShane. Graduates who want to share their academic achievements for acknowledgement on Baccalaureate Sunday should visit abyssinian.org for further details. Please remember, sisters and brothers, that the submission deadline is June 20th, 2022. We wish you a very powerful week ahead. and brothers all in faith and in struggle. Good morning. Good morning. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice on this Pentecost Sunday and be glad in it. We welcome you to the Abyssinian Baptist Church in the city of New York, where for 214 years we have been lifting the name of Jesus higher. And we invite you to join us as we seek to go forth in this worship service today. Now let's center ourselves as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he taught them to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, sisters and brothers, all we invite you to turn with us in our hymnal, One Lord, One Faith, One Baptism, hymn number 12, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy help and salvation. All ye who hear, now to his temple draw near, praise him with glad adoration. thank the choir for leading us in such a grand hymn of the church. Praise to the Lord. 
as our worshipers enter, we invite you now, sisters and brothers, to, us, to assume a posture of prayer and reflection. It is prayer time here at the Abyssinian Church, a time in our service where we go to God to thank God for all of the ways in which God has brought us, taught us, strengthened us, sustained us, forgiven us, empowered us, and has loved us without condition. It is prayer time a time in our service where we might go and offer our petitions unto God, that God might continue to guide us along the journey, that we might, through the power of prayer, be empowered to be Christ's witnesses in the world. We believe prayer has the capacity to change us, and through prayer, we can change situations. And so we come now with a very focused and centered spirit, believing in this time of prayer and time of conversation, individually and collectively. We want to continue to lift in prayer Deacon Martha Swint, Tom Stevens, Ron West, in the passing of their relatives. We continue to pray for Sister Harriet Michelle in the transition of her husband. And the memorial will take place this Saturday, June the 11th, in the large chapel at the Riverside Church. Sister Risa Printup is asking the church for prayer for her 101-year-old grandfather. Our member, Sister Tanika Bailey, who recently moved to North Carolina, requests prayer for upcoming surgery. We continue to solicit prayers for our first vice chair of our deacon board, Deacon Major Keels, who's recovering from recent, a recent procedure. Please continue to pray for Deacon Keels and his wife. We are so happy to report today that Dr. Marcella Maxwell is at home, recovering. We're sending, <clears throat> we're sending love to Dr. Maxwell and to Sister Catherine, Catherine McPherson, who is home as well, recovering. Please continue to lift in prayer Sister Deacon Thelma Mason and her husband and her children and her caretaker. We pray for our 99-year-old member, Sister Augusta Grubb. We lift up our member, Sister Hasty Lothar, Brother Philip Smith, Peyton Miles. We pray for Brother Christopher Gowan and Brother Forrest Murphy, who are both at the Isabel Nursing Home. We continue to lift in prayer Sister Tears Peterson, Brother Leon Eastman, Sister Annie Silcott, Sister Martha Goodman. We continue to pray for our pastor, that God might comfort and strengthen, heal and lead him. We come praying for our nation and our world. Amidst all of the darkness and chaos and violence that surrounds us day by day, we're asking God to shine a light deep within us that we might have the courage to be agents of peace and ambassadors for truth and love and righteousness in our world. On this Pentecost Sunday, we come praying that the spirit of the living God might not only fall fresh on us, but move us in such a way that when we leave here, we will be inspired to continue to hold the teachings of Jesus, Jesus Christ in our work and in our witness. Let's look to God in prayer now. Come Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us 
fill us with your love. We thank you on this morning, dear God, for life itself and for yet another opportunity to gather together as a congregation to lift up our thanks, to lift up our joys, to lift our doubts and our concerns and our burdens to you, knowing that you know all, that you hear all, that you are the great comforter, the great physician, the great healer. So we come sharing our sorrows and our burdens and our griefs and our anxiety. We come sharing our questions. And yet, amidst all of this, we come with a spirit of gratitude. We're alive. We're alive. We're alive to give you thanks. Things may not be like we want them to be. We may have aches and pains. We may have burdens. Some of us are looking for employment. Some of us are looking for friendship. Some, are, some of us need self-love. Some of us are looking once again to be re reunited with our families. All of us have some struggle, some journey, some river to cross, some mountain to climb. But amidst all of this, we believe that with you, all things are possible. We believe that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We believe that you are the shade upon our right hand. We believe you who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. We believe you guide us in dry, grimy tears. We've seen it. That's why we believe it. We've experienced how you have healed us and how you functioned in our lives. And we just come asking for you to help our unbelief, knowing that if you've done it before, you can do it again. So help our unbelief today. Help us to be ambassadors time and time again. We come to church, but we don't just want to come to church. We want to live out what it means to be the church so that when we leave this place and tomorrow hits and Tuesday comes around, someone will know that we are Christ followers by the way we love, by the things we stand for, by our capacity to forgive, those who we stand with, we may not know their name, we may not know where they're from, they might not even be from our country. But because you have loved us, we have the courage to love. Because you have re resurrected us from dead situations, we're going to go out into the streets of our lives and help others resurrect through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us. So speak to us in this moment. Hear our prayers, incline thine ear to us. Give us courage to put one foot in front of the other, knowing that with you all things are possible and that you promised never to leave us or forsake us. So we'll keep climbing up the King's Highway. We will keep trying to be a balm to a wounded spirit. We will keep letting our light shine for the sake of the gospel. Bless this church such that it might continue to be a blessing. This is our prayer as we go forth in this worship experience, begging thee to allow the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts to be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer.
I'm gonna sing till the spirit moves in my heart. I'm gonna sing till the spirit moves in my heart. I'm gonna sing till the spirit moves in my heart. I'm gonna sing till Jesus comes. I'm gonna sing till the Jesus moves in my heart. I'm gonna sing till the spirit moves in my heart. I'm gonna sing till the spirit moves in my heart. I'm gonna sing till the Jesus comes. I'm gonna sing till the spirit moves in my heart. Show our choir some more love, sisters and brothers. We thank them. We welcome you once again, sisters and brothers, all to the Abyssinian Baptist Church here in the city of New York. On behalf of, on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Calvin Butts III, we hope that you will find today's services uplifting and encouraging. Now, if you drive a black Nissan SUV, the license plate, num plate number HC65751. We encourage you now to move your vehicle and come back as quickly as you can. The Abyssinian community mourns with family members and children perished in the recent shootings. And we pray God's peace and healing for the families and this country. In case that you've missed any announcements, sisters and brothers, you can see these announcements at the end of service. Those panels will run again on screen at the end of service. You can also find this information online at abyssinian.org, www.abyssinian.org. And again, we want to reinforce the protocols we welcome all of you to worship again this Sunday. And as you may know, effective today, you no longer have to register to attend worship or events that take place here at the church. But we require you, require you to adhere to the COVID-19 safety protocols. So each time you come into Abyssinian, you must do the following. You must either in, enter your credential or your proof of vaccination. Go through the temp temperature screening at the entry points. Wear your mask at all, in all areas of the church. Use hand sanitizing stations. And if you're not a part of a family group, we're asking you to be cautious of this and stay at least three feet apart. And lastly, we reinforce and encourage once again, we encourage, you to get tested regularly. If you have not been vaccinated, get the vaccine and booster as soon as you can. Amen? Amen. And now, 
If you were born in the month of June, please stand. If you were born in the month of June. All right, everybody, come on, happy birthday. joy-filled birthday month, and may God's richest blessings be upon each of you. Many of you know our sister, Jamila Bragg. She serves faithfully here as a dedicated teacher in our Sunday school, and by her side, her husband, our member, and New York County District Attorney. Jamila's grandmother, uh, Sister Poynton, Charlesine Poynton, celebrated her 97th birthday yesterday on June 4th. <laughs> Ms. Poynton has been a faithful member of the St. Paul AME Church in Washington for her entire life, and she worshiped here at Abyssinian through the years. Every Sunday since the beginning of the pandemic, her grandmother gets dressed for church, watches this online say, at 7 a.m. service at Mount Zion in St. Petersburg, Florida, and then dials into St. Paul AME. And then at 10 a.m., she watches the Abyssinian service. Let's show her grandmother some love for her beautiful 97th birthday. That's beautiful. Each Sunday, when entering the Abyssinian Baptist Church, you are greeted by representatives of the Welcome and Hospitality Ministry. Let's show them some love. The Abyssinian Welcome and Hospitality Ministry is among the most stellar of any church located locally and abroad. Today, we want to applaud the work of this ministry that has been in existence when it was known as the Adam Clayton Powell Overseers Club. This particular ministry can boost, boast rather years of excellent service to the church under the pastorates of Adam Clayton Powell Jr., Dr. Samuel DeWitt Proctor, and certainly our beloved pastor, Dr. Calvin Otis Butts III. Since 2007, the Welcome and Hospitality Ministry has been led by one of our finest members. So join us in recognizing the excellent work of the ministry's outstanding leader, Sister John C. Thomas. Proclamation that we Good 
Good morning, good morning, good morning, Abyssinian Baptist Church. Dr. Reverend Kavanaugh Butcher Third. To all of the deacons, trustees, officers, newly ordained reverends, we say good morning. Good morning. I won't be here long because I know you'll throw me up. Okay. Normally, John Z. Thomas would stand before us and she would present one of our members an award for their service. But today, we want to present an award to John Z. Service, John Z. Thomas for her service. We appreciate you. And through the years of picnics, cookouts, uh, teas, and everything else, we have been by your side and your side, and we thank you both for all you have done for the church. We appreciate you and we love you. This is just to show us a little bit of the love for you. I'm Valerie McKee, excuse me for not introducing myself. I'm the Vice President of the Welcome to Hospitality Committee, and Welcome Deaconess Tia Wilson will present and read the proclamation to John Z. Thomas. Okay. Good morning, Abyssinian. Good morning. Um, we obviously love Ms. Johnson so much. She is the embodiment of everything that Welcome and Hospitality Ministry stands for. This proclamation this morning reads, the Abyssinian Baptist Church in the city of New York, Welcome and Hospitality Ministry, proclamation of exemplary service for John C. Williams Thomas. Whereas John C. Williams Thomas has been a member of the Abyssinian Baptist Church in the city of New York for 60 years. Whereas John C. Williams Thomas has served an exemplary member faithfully working to win more souls for Christ for over 50 years. Whereas John C. Williams Thomas served as a member of the Progressive Ladies Usher Board for over 25 years. Whereas John C. Williams Thomas was a member of the Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Overseas Club, currently known as the Welcome and Hospitality Ministry. Whereas John C. Williams Thomas has demonstrated outstanding leadership as president of the Welcome and Hospitality Ministry from 2007 to 2022. The therefore, it is fitting that she be duly acknowledged and honored for her devoted, steadfast, and exemplary service to God, the Abyssinian Baptist Church, and the Welcome and Hospitality Ministry. The aforementioned is proclaimed by the Abyssinian Baptist Church and the Welcome and Hospitality Ministry and was presented this day to celebrate John C. Williams Thomas, Sunday, June 5th, 2002, Reverend Dr. Calvin O. Butts III, pastor. Um, the Welcome and Hospitality has a donation we would like to give, and as John Z would say, it may be a small envelope, but it's a big donation. Let's show Sister John C some more love. She is a pillar in this church and in this community, and she is a pillar in my life. And we are grateful for her and her entire family and all the members of the Welcome and Hospitality Group. Thank you for your work and for your witness. And now, sisters and brothers, let's welcome Dr. Bus. Let's show him some love if he comes here. to see you. Forgive my familiarity with my greeting, but I'm just so delighted to be here. And especially when they honor John. Uh, that's just a wonderful thing. It was so well done. 
You know you're deserving. And uh, we love you deeply. And welcome in hospitality ministry. Did you all stand yet? Stand up so we can see all the members of the welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Not only do they welcome us on Sundays, but they are also involved in so many things that we do at the church. They welcome our guests. They are here for special occasions. They're here for funerals. So I'm delighted to be able to celebrate you today. May God continue to bless you and keep you. Thank you. Thank you. That's real deep for what you do because it's pleasant. It's selfless, you give freely. And I say that, lifting you up today, this is your day, but for all of the ministries of our church, it's a wonderful thing, and we love you for it. I want to, uh, Reverend Nicholas Richards, it's good to see you. Amen. You've been coming to church more often, you need prayer. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to see you. And uh, I, um, I especially want to point your attention to next Sunday, which is uh, the annual Officers' Day, the, <clears throat> the diaconate and the trustees. It's very important. I've invited uh, Reverend D. Darrell Griffin from Chicago to return. You know that uh, Griffin uh, was raised up here along with Raphael Warnock. And uh, we're looking forward to his participation. Now, I've been talking to him. I can't tell him what to preach, but I can tell him what I want in the sermon. <laughs> and uh, I'm concerned that the sermon deal largely with our time of transition. And uh, I don't want you to shy away from that. I want you to be strong in that. Because this is a legacy not for Calvin Butts. This is a legacy for a 214 year tradition. Now the tradition needs to shift. You know, nothing remains the same. Everything must change. A change is gonna come. A wonderful change has come over me. You know, as such as uh, But there are certain aspects of our tradition which we must never abandon. You know, one here is our music. We sing everything from a, a ring shout to uh, the glorious high anthems. And we must never lose that. I've repeated to you over and over, it's our subtle sense of song that has given America its only truly American music. Amen. It's only laughter and paper. <laughs> and so next Sunday, and then that Monday, I will be meeting with the pulpit committee. Now, you, some of you say, well, my name wasn't on the list. That's right. <laughs> but I don't want you to get nervous about it because I do speak to some of you individually. And I will be seeking your input. I may be asking you to attend a meeting every now and then. Don't get nervous about it. But I've tried to include a cross-section of our church, our officers, so that we can do a deep dive. This need not take forever. Those of you watching on live stream, members of our, this need not take forever. This is not going to take two years. But it does require that we give some prayer and thought. So uh, next Sunday, I invite all of you back to church, of course, to celebrate the Lord Jesus. But I also want some of you at home to get to church also. Come on back now. We've got to fill in the pews. I want you to get used to using the electronic giving. Push pay. Abby, A-B-Y at 77977. Please become familiar with that. I never thought, I never even thought about, never dreamed about texting paying my bills online, you know, I'm, I was a big check writing dude, you know. But some people have been, you know, uh, around long enough to remember when they didn't even write checks. They used to go to the phone company. 
<clears throat> that was a strategy of Adam Clayton Powers. Adam Clayton Powers would say, pay your phone bill in dimes or pennies, whatever it was. And people in protest would dump all those pennies right on the counter. <laughs> then we started writing checks. We gave through the envelope system. We'd write a check, put it in the envelope, drop it in the plate when the ushers would come around. Now it's so much more efficient, and we must embrace Abby at 77977. Use push pay, and that allows us to communicate across a number of platforms. We'll be meeting with our ministries to talk about how that can be done so that our ministry calendars and the give and take will be online. Now, I want to say this when I speak about ministries. Thank you. Welcome in hospitality. I told you at the beginning of the year that we were focusing on three things. I took it from an old government uh, uh, cabinet post, H-E-W, health, education, and the general welfare. Just the other day, I learned, and I'll make an official announcement soon, that we were granted a million dollars to put into our schools. We run two schools, the Thurgood Marshall Academy for Learning and Social Change and the Thurgood Marshall Academy Lower School. Now these two schools are public schools, New York City Department of Education schools. We have committed ourselves to this because that's where most of our children are. They are in the public schools, the, the, the charter schools, okay. But we cannot abandon the large majority of our children. And many of them have so many social and emotional challenges. And our teachers, black teachers who care, that's a ministry here, our teachers ought to be celebrated and encouraged. They come to church, they pray for strength, and they go back into the classroom. So I want you to know, beloved, um, that in terms of education, we have that money. Health, some of you may have seen or some of you may know that on this past Friday, I believe, I can't remember the exact day, uh, there was a press conference down at First Corinthian Baptist, and that's Choose Healthy Life. I'm a co-chair, and we were granted another $165,000 under Governor Hochul's administration to continue our work in caring for the health of our people. Now, you know I'm speaking to you like this because I've got health challenges. Ooh. But I'm encouraged by the advances that have been made in medicine. I'm encouraged by what we have learned about self-care. I'm encouraged because across the years, this is what my ministry has afforded me to see, I can see where one diagnosis used to be a certain death sentence, but now it seems like it could be a chronic disease. Remember now, we were on the front line in the fight against HIV and AIDS, and now HIV, AIDS is a chronic illness. People are living much longer. There are medications. So let us not be discouraged in our well-doing. And I wanted to show you, and we'll talk more about this, that our constant work, this is a part of our legacy, because influence, influence, longevity, tradition speaks clearly and strongly. And one of the things that you'll look for when you're looking for uh, a pastor is that you want someone who has had some experience, huh? you know, and, uh, but good preaching and an appreciation for who we are, largely. So I thank you, beloved, for all you've done. Uh, John Curry, where are you? Stand up, John. You all remember a young Jason Curry, the, the dean of the chapel at Fisk, who preached here? Well, this is his son. And uh, he's in his... Well, the, you're a rising senior at Morehouse College. God bless you. You'll be spending the summer in New York? All right, we'll see you in church then. Thank you. <laughs> and tell your father I said thank you for the generous gifts that he presented to me. Welcome, Jason, I mean, John Curry. Uh, and Williams Ison, I saw you. Tell your husband, uh, Philip Ison is a member of our church. 
uh, a good one. And uh, he was just recognized by one of the leading law magazines in the nation as one of the best lawyers in the United States of America. You didn't know that? <laughs> that just says y'all been married a long time. Right? That's what they say. You know. And uh, we're so proud of him because he doesn't charge us the hourly rate of one of the best lawyers in the nation. <laughs> he gives freely of his time, and I love him and appreciate him for that. Our scholarship ministry is offering scholarships for the 2022-23 academic semester, and the Federal Credit Union is offering scholarships. You may go to our website and get the information. Uh, it's for high school seniors and college fresh persons. And remember, if you get a scholarship, it can follow you all four years, as long as you keep your grade point average up. Now, we're going to have baccalaureate Sunday on the fourth Sunday in June. 10 a.m., and our speaker will be the president of Fordham University, the Reverend Joseph McShane. As I said, Reverend McShane is uh, uh, retiring, but I want him to come. He's a good speaker, and he's a man dedicated to education. And here recently, under his administration, I'm teaching at Fordham now, and you were there for a moment. Reverend Hoggard just graduated with his doctorate, Earl Thorpe. I'm a reader for his dissertation now. He's graduating. Reverend Dr. Violet D. Slee graduated from Fordham. Um, and I can name a few more. E. Tong Young, that's right, just graduated from Fordham. More and more, we are taking advantage of education, not only at the Great Morehouse College, but also at the other great leading institutions. It is a shame that our young people are not going to college in the numbers that they once did. I got your letter and I will act on it, that they once did. But I want you to know that we have to be encouraging. There's nothing wrong with our aspirations for wanting to achieve, to wanting to be well-educated. We have not succumbed to any sort of quote unquote, you know, wanting to be white. We want to be the best human beings we can be. It doesn't matter what color we are. And when I look around and see what has transpired between the races, for example, many of us say, well, I worked hard and this young white person came up behind me and I trained them and then they promoted them over me. We've seen that, haven't we? But we've also seen that when we were struggling trying to get ahead, there was some white person who helped us and pulled us up and showed us the way. We have to overcome this race thing. And our faith is supposed to take us above language and culture to the rarefied air. That's what Abyssinian stands for. And dearly beloved, I hope we can keep that tradition. As you go online, you will notice that uh, there are many references to the arts. Christine Melton is doing a reading concerning Miss Ida B., Miss Ida B. Wells. You want to see that. That's at the Harlem YMCA. And on Friday, June 7th, where's Sneed? Right here at the door. Okay, on Friday, June 17th at 7.30. Damien Sneed will conduct the Harlem Chamber Players presentation of the Ordering of Moses, a monumental oratorio for soloist, choir, organ, and orchestra, and it will be performed at the Riverside Church. These are the kinds of men and women that we want uh, connected uh, not only to Abyssinian, but leading in our nation. We need them, and we need their commitment and I have to tell you that Sneed is an ordained Baptist preacher. He's out of Georgia somewhere. And so, uh, you know, one day maybe. Okay. <laughs> Juneteenth is coming up. And uh, it's on Father's Day, June 19th. And we will celebrate Juneteenth. This will be our first Juneteenth Sunday. And uh, there's an event happening all around the country, uh, events. And one is Freedom Day, and it includes the Glow Up 
and it's in Atlanta, Georgia. Glow Up is a two-day celebration of entertainment programming, pure vibes and everything positive about black love. That's really needed now as we face continued hate crimes and mass shootings. So go online and look up GLOW, G-L-O-W, UP. And uh, let's try and see if we can participate in that. Uh, did I mention the shootings this last night in Philadelphia? Terrible. Terrible. And uh, once upon a time, I used to party in Philly. Philly is a good party town at one time. And this was supposed to have taken place in one of the more active areas of Philadelphia. So check on your folk, call them up, see what's going on down in Philly. So beloved, please remember now to use Abby at 77977. I encourage you to text that, use push pay. You may give by Zelle or you may mail your contributions to the church, 132. West 138th Street, New York, New York, 10030. Now, trustees want you to know that there's still space for your plaque on the Abbey West wall. There are a couple of things that I want to get completed, and one is to have the official opening of Abbey West. So if you have a place, if you reserved a place, or if you want a place, please check in with our trustees on the Abbey West wall. Uh, the chair of our trustee board, Alexis Thomas, will be there to meet you. She'll give you the information. Don't fuss with her. Don't argue with her. You know, don't shoot the messenger. You know, I know that you've been given to Abbey West. It is essential that we open that building. Because our young people, in order to steer them away from violence with guns, fighting in the street, gambling, and then I saw... Y'all forgive me now, uh, in the Daily News, the mayor saying smoke pot. Now what he was saying was that he wasn't going to enforce, you know, uh, criminal procedures against people caught smoking pot. Don't smoke pot. <laughs> Leave it alone. Just like the liquor stores, I hope they all go broke. I know the injustice, I know the injustice across the years, you know, I know that. And I know that some of us drink wine and we buy wine and have it with our meals, et cetera, et cetera. But it is offensive to our community, beloved. Our children, uh, uh, Prince once had a song, High on Crack, Toting a Machine Gun. This is, this is devastating. And while I want to see business thrive in New York, I don't want to see the leader of our city and I'll acknowledge he won the election fair and square, but I don't want to see him standing up encouraging people in whatever expression it is to use marijuana. It's not a good thing. So I hope that uh, you will give to us so that we can open Abbey West. It is important, it is essential for our community and it is part of our legacy. Our legacy, our legacy. I was close where I ended, started. John Z. Thomas is in a long tradition. You know, uh, the Adam Clayton Powell Overseas Club started to send Adam Clayton Powell Sr. overseas so he could go to the Holy Land. You know, was Beatrice Talley a leader of your, your group? B. Talley, you know. This is, this is, this is long tradition and it changes told you things change, but there is a constant that runs through this. And so I want you to be aware of that, and I want you to keep the faith. Uh, God is good. There's, there's nothing that I can say that's any more profound than that at the moment. God is really good, and he's kept us. And you all forgive me for taking this time. Um, and, but I want you to know that Abyssinian is more, it's about prayer. It's about healing. It's about love. You know, but it is also about taking that fight, that commitment to the streets, winning the souls for Christ, bringing them into the church, sitting them in the pews, helping them to learn the songs. You know, and if I'm wrong about this, I'm just wrong, but I know that when I went to church, across all those years, singing the same songs, same songs, 
you know. My hope is built on nothing. Same songs, you know. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Same songs. So that now when I come to church, you know, at this age, I can stand up and sing the song. If I'm walking down the street, I can sing the song. And it sustains me. It helps. So I want to say to all of you, keep the faith and spread it gently. Share it with your children. And don't give up. And um, I think that uh, I got a feeling. Everything's going to be all right. So um, we press on now. Reverend Hoggett will come share with us his scripture, and the choir will give us the meditation, and then we will explore the word of God together. Let the church say amen. amen. Let's show Dr. Butts some more love. Sister Lynn Butts. <laughs> For his prophetic and visionary leadership. Our scripture for today is coming from Acts 2. Acts 2, beginning at verse 1, a very familiar passage of scripture for Pentecost. I'm actually reading this morning from the message translation. Acts 2, beginning at verse 1. Acts 2, beginning at verse 1, the message translation. Hear now these words, sisters and brothers. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. Let's pray now as the choir will come with our meditation on our topic for the morning, disruption at Pentecost. Disruption at Pentecost, amen. Yeah. 
I want to also mention, sisters and brothers, to please keep Brother Londell Davis in prayer. He had uh, surgery last week. Please continue to keep Brother Londell Davis in prayer as well. Let me read this message translation once again for us. Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all gathered together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit th spread throughout their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. Disruption at Pentecost. So let's look to God in prayer. Eternal One, Holy One, our friend, speak to us now. Stretch us and make us uncomfortable. Cause for moments of self-analysis and introspection. We want to be drawn closer to you, not in what we say, but in how we go about living our lives. So bless us and keep us by thy mighty power in these moments of exploration. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. What does Pentecost mean to you, sisters and brothers? What does Pentecost mean to you? What does, I want you to really think about this now. What does the Spirit do for you? How does the Spirit affect you, impact you? Is it only a comforter? Or could the Spirit be something different or something more expansive? Could the spirit be love? Love is an act of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. And Pentecost should be seen as an act of love. Many connect Pentecost to the birth of the church, but there were no bishops, there was no church or priest at the first Pentecost. Acts 2 and 4 suggest that the Holy Spirit spread throughout their ranks and they started speaking in a number of different languages. How were they to understand each other's language? I want to come back to that. But Pentecost celebrates the indwelling Spirit of God as a permanent fixture in our lives. The Holy Spirit is not an objective, occasional, magical, feel-good impulse that hits us when the beat hits. The Holy Spirit represents our own effective decision driven by the resurrected spirit and the power of Christ seeking to come alive and be at work in our lives. This was given to us through the power of love. The wind of Pentecost does not blow lightly. And the birth of the church didn't come in some quiet fashion. The text indicates the spirit came rushing like a gale force. The wind of Pentecost explode, exploding, it explodes as a new creation within us. It is a new set of human relationships and human values such as love, passion, compassion, Courage, empathy, which motivates us to live a new way and to embody the spirit and teachings of Christ that have been deposited within us. The spirit at Pentecost is a disruptor. It moved those gathered beyond their normal way of doing things. And the spirit at work in us 
The spirit at work in us can disrupt complacency. Complacency. When we see babies murdered and elders slaughtered and communities left in shambles and their rights have been stripped away, we need the Holy Spirit to come and disrupt us so we can disrupt these situations. Are you listening? The Spirit is at work in us so we can disrupt evil. It can disrupt wickedness within us first and then around us. And the Spirit causes us to act and to do what is right. We are disruptors because the Spirit disrupts us. And in an age of violence and turmoil, we need to be disruptors of evil so that all of us can be agents of change in our world. Notice, the Spirit disrupts those who are bona fide Christ followers. I didn't say Christians. Christians enslaved our ancestors. Christians use prayer as a moral cover, cover for systemic injustice. There is a major difference between being a follower of Jesus of Nazareth and the political nationalistic movement that is often labeled as Christianity. Don't get mad at me anymore. I don't call myself a Christian anymore. I, I strive to be a follower of Christ, led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit at work in us helps us to distinguish what it means to be a Christian versus a Christ follower. Which one are you? Which one are you? Dr. Butts can't answer that. D. Daryl Griffin coming next week can't answer that. Hoggart, your brother, can't answer that. Which one are you? So it's no wonder why people call themselves Christians, lie, kill, cheat, steal, hate others, hate themselves, because they refuse to love. They aren't familiar, they haven't embraced this notion of the love of God through Christ, which comes through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit at work in the Christ follower conditions us to be uncomfortable and different. It awakens love and a righteous indignation within us. Having a real love for your country is the courage to correct its mistakes, its evil, and its corruption. If we love it, we definitely have to challenge America to be better. Because I love Jesus, I am committed to showing it in my actions. As a Christ follower, the Holy Spirit moves us to work to alleviate suffering in the world and within the communities that we love. This is why Jesus said, if you love me, show me with your actions. Jesus says, I'm from Missouri, sister. I'm from Missouri, brother. I'm from the show me state. I need to see that you love me. We often want to be passive with our Christian witness, loud on Sunday morning, but quiet when we are filled, when we should be filled with righteous indignation. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are called to be disruptors as the Spirit is a disruptor. The Spirit came and it busted loose. It started a fuss. It started it on its own party. And the Holy Spirit compels us to disrupt and it gives us power to make those in power uncomfortable about the status quo. It makes us uncomfortable when we examine ourselves as individuals. That's why I asked, are you a Christian or are you a Christ follower? Yeah. 
The Holy Spirit forces us to look within. And the only way we can do true introspection is through the power of love. What does the power of the Spirit move you to do? Does the Holy Spirit move you to action, to disruption, to be a transformative force for love in the world? Pentecost refers to the passion of resolve needed for a new life to which Christ has called and summoned us. Pentecost provides a unique opportunity to be more intentional about following Jesus' commandment of love. To be more like Jesus is to be rooted in love. To be more like Jesus is to be rooted in love. To be more like Jesus is to be rooted in love. To have the Holy Spirit is to have love. And to have love is to be love. To be love. Oh, and sometimes we get this thing about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, twisted. We think the Holy Ghost is just something that makes us feel good for a temporary moment. It is a response. But if you are seeking the Holy Spirit to be at work in your life, Practice loving everybody. Practice forgiveness. Practice being more compassionate. Practice active listening. Practice being a disruptor. The Holy Spirit is power, and that power is rooted in love. Power to change the condition of yourself and your community. And on the day of Pentecost, the people were disrupted and they receive power, not only for themselves, but they receive power to go out into the world and make a difference because they were told that they would never be alone. Jesus says, I love you. I love you. I love you enough that I'm not going to leave you alone. I love you enough that I'm going to leave you a comforter. We come to know God through the Spirit. This is why he says the world cannot see Jesus, so the world must see Jesus through us, through the Spirit that is at work in us. And we don't take our cues from the oppressor. We don't take our cues from the world. We take our cues from the faithful who are committed to embracing the radical teachings of Jesus that are rooted in love. So Pentecost calls us. This is the takeaway for today's message. Pentecost calls us to love purely and fully and become missionaries of love. So when you're out at brunch today and somebody asks you, what did the brother preach about today? If you can't remember anything else that your brother has said today, just write this down. Pentecost calls us to love purely and fully and become missionaries of love. From the first Pentecost until now, the Spirit continues to disrupt and is moving in our lives. I asked you earlier how they were able to understand each other's language. We can understand why we speak in different languages and be understood for everyone understands the language of love. For love is universal. The language of love is universal. And through the power of the Spirit, we are called to love and embrace everyone. And our belief in Pentecost disrupts discrimination and bias and hurtful tribalism of every type. The Holy Spirit summons us to forgive those who have wounded us. Pentecost calls us to reach out to all to touch in a genuine embrace. This is the true mission of the Christ follower. Not only to draw people to church, yes, we are to draw people to church, but we are to give ourselves in service unto God through love because Pentecost moves us to be missionaries of love. And some may say today, all right, brother, come on now, be easy. Enough with all this love stuff. You know, get over it. I mean, 
I've had all these experiences over the last three years. I'm catching hell, still in a pandemic, record inflation. Every time I turn my gas pump on, I gotta spend $50. You know, people, huge blows to police reform and voting protection and abortion rights and these daily shootings that have impacted every corner of the world. Come on, brother, how do you want to talk about love? And, and the question some might have is, how can we collectively grieve one community when they barely put their dead in the ground when another community is forced to do the same? How can you talk about love, brother? What spiritual tools are in place to help us move beyond rage and fear and despair and sadness? We have the Holy Spirit as seen through the power of love and the gift of the Comforter. Through the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us, we are called to disrupt. No matter what the situation might be, we are called to disrupt in love. We are called to love and we are called to disrupt. We are called to awaken the moral conscience of the world. What does the Holy Spirit cause you to do? How do you allow the Holy Spirit to be alive and at work at you? to disrupt your normal way of doing things. We should all be asking the same thing of the Christ today. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Disrupt me, melt me, mold me, fill me. Use me. That's it. That's it. Use me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. This is the disruption of Pentecost that lives in each of you if you seek to embody the teachings of Jesus Christ. And I offer this through you in love. Amen and amen. Church, amen. amen. The doors of the church are open. Perhaps more than any other Sunday, this is a good time to send out the call and pray that the Spirit has touched you through the preaching of the gospel, and that you would come now and give your heart to God and your hand to one of our officers. doors of our church are open. Perhaps you come from another city, another town, and you want to unite with our fellowship. The doors are open to you also. You already know the Lord Christ. You've already felt the Spirit move in your life. The Spirit will guide us. It will teach us. It will bring all things to our remembrance. Pray that God has touched you this morning and that you will come. For those of you at home, you may email us, member, M-E-M-B-E-R, at abyssinian.org, member, at abyssinian.org. Please come. Please email us. We want you to be a part of our fellowship. But more importantly, we want you to be close to the Lord God through our Savior Jesus. We seek to follow the religion of Jesus. Everybody's spirit.
Let the church say amen. Amen. On this Pentecost Sunday, we thank Reverend Dr. Hoggart for allowing God to use it. But as he said, beloved, take the spirit with you as you go out and spread it with all. The power of the spirit moves. You may meet someone today who speaks a different language, but deep speaks to deep. Sometimes you can communicate beyond the boundaries of language. Amen. I want to share this with you before we close. There's an attorney down in North Charleston, South Carolina. Her name is Cheryl Whipper Hamilton. And Cheryl Whipper Hamilton, if you're listening, um, are you related to the Whippers from South Carolina? We had a preacher here in New York, a pastor, a good friend, a fraternity brother uh, named Whipper. And I want to know if you're related to Ben Whipper, Benjamin Whipper. Uh, so, and thank you, she sent a check. Now, I would normally take the check over and it to the trustees, but it's made out to the Reverend Dr. Calvin O. Busby III. So I'm gonna hold on to this one then. But um, I read it really to indicate two things. One, your reach is large. You know, you got relatives in Virginia, South Carolina, Florida, Montana, mm -hmm, we there too, you know, Texas, California, and uh, you can speak to them, you do speak to them, spread the love of God and spread thoughts about things like voting, you know, and share your love across the board. So we have a big reach here at Abbas and a lot of people watch us and we we're thankful for that. So I want you to know um, that. And, and along with the reach is the familial uh, connections. You know, uh, when we would go, Walter, when we would go to the conventions, we'd get to the conventions, uh, National Baptist, Progressive, it didn't matter. And as soon as you walked in the door of any convention event, you saw your cousin or your aunt or your grandfather who've been going to these conventions, and we'd have a good time. So, beloved, fellowship, enjoy one another, spread the good news among one another, encourage one another with the word of God. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much for your prayers, your love, your support. Keep the faith, spread it gently, and we move forward. Our closing selection is blessed quietness, holy quietness, what a, what? Oh, what assurance floods my soul uh, on the stormy sea. Jesus speaks to me, and the billows cease to roll. Now, don't y'all get upset. I, you know, I'm such and such years old, so I don't remember the hymns as well as I used to. But uh, sing along with the choir. What number is it? Number 106 in the hymn book. Come on, everybody, sing to the glory of God.
and brothers, God of our weary years and of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far now on our way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in thy path, we pray. Lest our feet, dear God, stray from the places where we first met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world that we should ever forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to you, dear God, and true to our native land. And now may the power of God, the love of Christ Jesus, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. World without end. Amen. generous contributions help support the mission of the Abyssinian Church. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. Simply text ABBY to 77977. That's ABBY, A-B-Y, to 77977. Or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account at 917-710-7933. You can mail your contribution to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and your generosity. We invite you to continue to lift in prayer members of our faith community who are requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names will appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. The Abyssinian Cafe Virtual Sunday Brunch takes place today, Sunday, June the 5th at 1.30 p.m. Please remember to register for Abbey Cafe by visiting abyssinian.org. And our noonday Bible study with Reverend Pamela Mason takes place tomorrow, Monday, June the 6th at noon. Please see on your screen, join details, and this information is also posted abyssinian.org the good grief bereavement ministry meets via zoom tuesday june the 7th at 7 p.m deacons henry mccurtis and sydney bush lead this powerful bi-weekly dialogue that explores issues of experience and anticipated loss see on your screen join details and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information the Love and Marriage Ministry will lead Wednesday evening Bible study in June with Deacon Keith and I, Javette Hines, presenting a focus on a family that prays together, stays together. See details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. We welcome you to join Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line takes place on Thursday, June the 9th at 7 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. You will find Zoom and dial-in details on your screen. 
and the church's website under worship services. The Abyssinian Scholarship Ministry is offering scholarships for the 2022-2023 fall semester. Visit abyssinian.org for the application and eligibility criteria. The Abyssinian Scholarship Ministry applications are also available at the church lobby reception desk. The Abyssinian Federal Credit Union will award a $500 scholarship to a high school senior or college freshman for the 2022 semester. See criteria details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org. Abyssinian Sunday School Ministry will have its annual Youth Achievement and Promotion Ceremony this upcoming Saturday, June the 11th, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the courtyard of the Sugar Babies Child Development Center across the street from the church. The event keynote speaker is our own Dr. Justine Anderson. Parents, Sunday school teachers, and children are encouraged to dress comfortably and attend as we plan to have a great time with food and with fellowship. For recognition, please submit your child's achievements to KPEAK as soon as possible or call Sister Peak, the church office, Extension 216. The Abyssinian Church Diaconate and Trustee Boards will celebrate their annual sermon on Sunday, June 12th at 10 a.m. with the Reverend Dr. D. Darrell Griffith as our guest preacher for the occasion. On Friday, June 17th at 7.30 p.m., Damien Sneed will conduct the Harlem Chamber Players presentation of the Ordering of Moses, a monumental oratorio for soloist, choir, organ, and orchestra. The event takes place at the Riverside Church, and for ticket information, visit abyssinian.org or go to www.harlemchamberplayers.org. The Abyssinian Virtual Day of Grace, a one-day new members orientation, takes place on Saturday, June 18th, from 9 a.m. until noon. Visit abyssinian.org for registration details. The Abyssinian Church will acknowledge our 2022 high school and college graduates on Baccalaureate Sunday, June 26th, in the 10 a.m. worship service. Our guest speaker for the occasion will be President of Fordham University, Reverend Joseph McShane. Graduates who want to share their academic achievements for acknowledgement on Baccalaureate Sunday should visit abyssinian.org for further details. Please remember, sisters and brothers, that the submission deadline is June 20th, 2022. Your generous contributions help support the mission of the Abyssinian Church. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. Simply text ABBY to 77977. That's ABBY, A-B-Y, to 77977. Or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account at 917-710-7933. You can mail your contribution to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and your generosity. We invite you to continue to lift in prayer members of our faith community who are requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names will appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen.
The Abyssinian Cafe Virtual Sunday Brunch takes place today, Sunday, June the 5th at 1.30 p.m. Please remember to register for Abbey Cafe by visiting abyssinian.org. And our Noonday Bible Study with Rev. Pamela Mason takes place tomorrow, Monday, June the 6th at noon. Please see on your screen, join details, and this information is also posted at abyssinian.org. The Good Grief Bereavement Ministry meets via Zoom Tuesday, June the 7th at 7 p.m. Deacons Henry McCurtis and Sidney Bush lead this powerful bi-weekly dialogue that explores issues of experience and anticipated loss. See on your screen join details and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. The Love and Marriage Ministry will lead Wednesday evening Bible study in June with Deacon Keith and I, Javette Hines, presenting a focus on a family that prays together, stays together. See details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. We welcome you to join Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line takes place on Thursday, June the 9th at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. You will find Zoom and dial-in details on your screen and the church's website under Worship Services. The Abyssinian Scholarship Ministry is offering scholarships for the 2022-2023 fall semester. Visit abyssinian.org for the application and eligibility criteria. The Abyssinian Scholarship Ministry applications are also available at the church lobby reception desk. The Abyssinian Federal Credit Union will award a $500 scholarship to a high school senior or college freshman for the 2022 semester. See criteria details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org. Abyssinian Sunday School Ministry will have its annual Youth Achievement and Promotion Ceremony this upcoming Saturday, June the 11th, from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. in the courtyard of the Sugar Babies Child Development Center across the street from the church. The event keynote speaker is our own Dr. Justine Anderson. Parents, Sunday school teachers, and children are encouraged to dress comfortably and attend as we plan to have a great time with food and with fellowship. For recognition, Please submit your child's achievements to K-Peak as soon as possible or call Sister Peak, the church office, extension 216. The Abyssinian Church Diaconate and Trustee Boards will celebrate their annual sermon on Sunday, June 12th at 10 a.m. with the Reverend Dr. D. Daryl Griffith as our guest preacher for the occasion. On Friday, June 17th at 7.30 p.m., Damian Sneed will conduct the Harlem Chamber Players presentation of The Ordering of Moses, a monumental oratorio for soloist, choir, organ, and orchestra. The event takes place at the Riverside Church, and for ticket information, visit abyssinian.org or go to www.harlemchamberplayers.org The Abyssinian Virtual Day of Grace, a one-day new members orientation, takes place on Saturday, June 18th from 9 a.m. until noon. Visit abyssinian.org for registration details. The Abyssinian Church will acknowledge our 2022 high school and college graduates on Baccalaureate Sunday, June 26th, in the 10 a.m. worship service. Our guest speaker for the occasion will be President of Fordham University, Reverend Joseph McShane. Graduates who want to share their academic achievements for acknowledgement on Baccalaureate Sunday should visit abyssinian.org for further details. 
Please remember, sisters and brothers, that the submission deadline is June 20th, 2022. We wish you a very powerful week ahead.